Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to Chattering with Nicholas Vince. In a few moments, I'm going to be speaking with John Schnitzer. But before I do, uh, I just wanted to give a couple of shout outs. Uh, usual thanks to everybody who's uh, subscribed to the YouTube uh, channel. A very thank you very much indeed. Um, it really is. I, do, I really do appreciate it. And uh, a shout out to James Azrael, who was a guest, the first guest of this year uh, on the 7th of January. Uh, so this is James of the Horror and Sci-Fi Prop Preservation Society. You see, I had to read that. And because um, <laughs> I can get it wrong otherwise. Um, HSPAA. And uh, James has this amazing collection of over 1,500 props from movies, um, from horror and sci-fi uh, movies, which he takes out on road shows. And they're doing the second book of items in which I'm going to be contributing as well. So you've got 48 hours to snag one of those. And if you contribute over $15 and they raise another $100, then they've met their stretch goal, which means you get an enamel pin as part of your reward um as from what i understand so check that out it's on kickstarter and it's called uh the movie prop book two um so yeah check that out hi john hey how you doing i'm doing very well thank you how are you I'm I'm chattering with Chatterbox. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so great. I grew up such a crazy Hellraiser fan that this is already. I'm you know this is, I'm sure people can. I'm sure people demand that you chatter your teeth, but I, you it's know. not going to happen. I, they're too sensitive now. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I I literally this, I have wind up clacky ones. That would be the, that would be by the way the best Sensodyne uh, the best like toothpaste uh, commercial where it's like sensitive teeth can't quite, can't quite uh, chatter people straight back to the pit of hell anymore. <laughs> it's just, you do it, then you go, now I can chatter all the time. Forget it. Forget it. Don't do that. You see, I swear, that the, <laughs> I, and I can never find it, but I, I, which possibly means I dreamt it. I don't think I did, but I swear in an early edition of Fangoria, they subtitled a picture of Chatterer with latest spokesperson for the American Dental Association. Um. <laughs> I think I have that one still. I still have a collection of my, all my old Fangorias um, from uh from like 89 to uh i think 94 oh wow that I, that I kept around yeah yeah from when i when i was a kid <laughs> i used to have to go to this there was a newsstand i would have to go to and this guy would would i was in uh when i was in the was it uh the i first started getting finger i guess when i was like in fifth grade in elementary Which school makes you and what? the guy would be what? Nine years? That makes me. Yeah, it makes you if if you're in fifth grade because I don't do American grades. We don't oh, oh, them. oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Look, I was in elementary school. I was, you know, I was a child. I was like <laughs> nine or ten, or whatever. Right. I don't know. I don't do grades either. I'm terrible at numbers. Anyway, but the um, what's so funny was I, when I was like when I was nine years old. Yeah, I would um, go to the newsstand, and this guy always the first the beginning of every month he would have my fangoria waiting for me and i would just buy it from him it was like the great it was awesome i love that oh, stuff brilliant. It was so much fun and oh yeah and freddy krueger robert england didn't live that far from me and i always had a copy of fangoria on me anyway and i had him autograph the different covers that he was on because i we would go to the same movie theater and he i met his wife he's like this is my wife nancy and i was yeah. like if Nancy doesn't wake up screaming, she goes, I know she won't wake up at all. We know, we know. I was like, oh my God, I'm like the millionth obnoxious person. She's like, well, you're the first child to do it. <laughs> I was like, there's adults doing this to you? That's terrible. And he's <laughs> at least I had an excuse. I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> Saw them at the end of last year. Very, very briefly, literally, as I was walking into a green room, they were walking out and they just said hi uh, to myself and my friend, Harvey oh, Wild. Uh, he's, he's an amazing guy. He's a really lovely, yeah. lovely guy. But we're here not to talk about Fangoria or, or Robert England. Um, but to speak about Haunters, the art of the scare. So before we go any further, where can people see it? Okay, so now it's on it's on iTunes in America and in Canada. We're working on 
the international for, for everything else. Um, but on, flip that back. Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix right now in America and Canada. It's also on iTunes and Amazon. And if you get it on um, iTunes or Amazon and you get, get it with the bonus features, it comes with 30 minutes of bonus features um, on the DVD and the Blu-ray. And on iTunes, it has the iTunes extra. So, but there's a lot of other places that it's, it's on. It's on Vudu. It's on, it's on a lot of different platforms right now. And if you actually, if you go to hauntersmovie.com, hauntersmovie.com, and you click on like the, the buy button, it'll show you all the different places where you can get it right now. Right. You sign up on our email list. <clears throat> then w- once we update and get it to Australia, which I really want to get to Australia and the UK badly, we get a lot of Australia and the UK. I, I, I want to get it to you. <laughs> I want you to have it. So sign up on the email list. The second it becomes available there, we're going to let everybody know. Right. Brilliant. I, and I watched it. I had a chance to sit, properly sit down and watch it this afternoon. Um, it's just amazing. It's absolutely extraordinary. Now, you have to understand, in the UK, Halloween is not, and as I've mentioned on the show before, Halloween is not that big. You know, it, but in America, it is huge, as you point out in the documentary. It's like $6.2 billion, the second most profitable, you know, biggest thing after christmas well this actually so here's an update for you this year was the biggest year for halloween ever and it made uh 9.1 billion dollars this year 9.1 billion and one of the things we point out of the movie was that during times of 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 crisis of uh economic downturn, but usually during times of uh, political unrest social and political unrest when people are really anxious and scared they turn to horror and haunts for an escape. And Halloween always does well during those times. I mean, I was looking for my movie. I wanted the haunt history section that was showing off when they started and when they became more popular to try to understand why haunts were getting more extreme. And the one thing, we, that's when we noticed in 2001, Halloween had made them to that date right after September 11, 2001. You're like, oh my God people are screaming their heads off because they're so afraid of what's what the terrorist attacks and what's going on. There's no, nothing else you can do. You can, you can only talk so much before as an adult, you want to scream your head off. And this last year, we just had a horrific election with, a, it was, it, look, there were people marching yesterday, um, but it was so horrific and people were so stressed out. I don't care what side you're on. People were really stressed out. Yes. You know. Yeah. I mean, and, and, that, and as a result they, of the they, economics, they to go scream. yeah. And, I, and it's not just the oh, election oh. and who won or who lost or whatever. It's just, you know, it's the economic hurt and people have been really struggling for 2008 um, since this really sure. you know, dug in. in. 2008 beat out in 2008 beat out 2001. The financial meltdown made more money for Halloween than, uh, than even 2001. I mean, people were just, they had to go and freak out somewhere. Yeah, I call it like, um, it's like the therapeutic value of being scared. I call it scarapy. You know, <laughs> I think we all need a good dose of scarapy every once in a while. It, it, it's catharsis. I remember seeing, and I, I, uh, I know not everyone's favorite movie, but uh, Cabin in the Woods. I really enjoyed <laughs> Cabin and sat there. Right terrified um in the middle of a, a, a just yeah absolutely um terrified by this thing but then afterwards just felt so relaxed so relieved because all the tension had gone in my shoulders and so you know this weight because you, you get so uh wound up so yeah i'm kind of not surprised about what's going on at the moment um people's reaction okay so you kind of vaguely alluded to this that you you know you kind of made your movie because you were looking for it is that how it came about? Was this the, the inspiration saying, okay, what is the answer to all this? And I can't find it. I know I'll go and make a documentary. No, I mean, it was, it was really funny. I, 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 I really wanted to make it. I love documentaries so much. And it was so funny because I was uh, talking about it with my wife. And then I was like, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to do a documentary about haunted houses for Halloween. Came out like that too. Cause I love haunted houses for Halloween so much. I just love them. And I thought the, the whole story was going to be Donald's story because Donald's in the movie. He's the one wearing the dark glasses. Yeah. 
And um, he actually has a haunt in his mother's house. And across the street, his neighbor has a haunt. And they've been competing for about a decade. And I, I thought that was interesting. And then I talked with Donald. I said, well, you guys must be really close now. He goes, I don't talk to that guy. He's the competition. I was like, what? All I could think was the whole movie should be two haunts, one street, and that could be hilarious. And then I, I, I filmed them both. And then the next day I came back to, to, to film some more. And Donald said, you know what? I met him the other day. He's a really nice guy. I, I think I blew it all out of proportion. I was like, well, there goes that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he was helping them build stuff. And I was like, okay, I don't know. I, I, all of a sudden, um, I was like, well, I, I was filming other haunts and I was already asking permission to film more haunts because like I, I go to delusion, the interactive haunted house play where you you're a character and you play a part. I go, there's so I go to universal studios, Halloween horror nights where I get to like, like this year you got to go into the shining and you're in the shining maze and you're in the overlook hotel. It's so great. There's so many amazing interactive experiences and, and haunts and horror experiences that I was like, I really want to film them all and show the difference between traditional interactive and extreme. Because I've always heard about ones like blackout where naked people waterboard you. I'm like, I'm not doing it, <laughs> but it's fascinating. And I, everyone they kept saying no to me because they weren't sure how I was going to film it. And I was like, you know what, if I can make this look the way it feels, if we can, whenever we enter a haunt, have a it needs to have a cinematic look because when you go inside of a hunt, your heart rate's going, the, mm. the colors are amazing. I, I get tired of seeing these, look, a flow through video where you go through a haunted house with a, a phone or a video camera and just walk through it is great if you're never going to go in the first place and it's, or a nice remembrance of something that you, that you did with a friend. But to me, it's like filming an IMAX movie with your phone. It's like, I'm sorry, they just made it a massive, immersive experience, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on lights, on atmosphere, months and months and months building and building and building. And then someone just walks through the video camera. It's like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, I want to give a movie that feels less like a documentary, more like a movie. I want to be a visceral cinematic experience. And as I started filming and getting all these great interviews, I just started noticing that that's right. These extreme haunts and the traditional haunts, there's a bit of a um, bit of a controversy here. And the best way to get somebody into a subculture is with a debate, with an argument. Exit through the gift shop, I think, is the greatest street art documentary of all time. Uh, now, is that like the most? I mean, like that's. Uh, really ends up being about what's art <laughs> and who's an artist and what's what does any of this mean anyway i mean style wars which was you know in the 80s where they were just really showing all the graffiti artists at work and what they were doing is a great movie and i love that one but exit to the gift shop i mean that was a phenomenon it got people in the street art that weren't even noticing it before you know so i wanted to, to make something that that could open up the haunt subculture to people the people who go um that don't get Halloween and haunts, it's just not their thing, can watch it and go, oh, okay, well, this guy, maybe for the for most people has gone too far, but these other people that I thought maybe were just strange or weird or wasn't sure what they were doing, I can see the heart in it. It's it, uh, like Todd Robbins and Guillermo del Toro, these people always say, the darkness is the best thing to bring out the light. When yeah. you bring out the horror, you bring out the heart. You know, and I, I look, I'm just so proud of the movie because what do we get? You get a movie that you can laugh out loud. You can get emotional. You can be sh properly disturbed and shocked. <laughs> and then hopefully, you know, uh, by the end, you can also feel strangely inspired. You know, that's that's my hope. Uh, well, what, what, what was it like for you? <laughs> well, it, uh, it's extraordinary. And I, I went through all that and I, and. It, you know, spoilers about the inevitably we're going to have spoilers. And that, one thing I must say, for me, the mark of a true documentarian is you refrain from commenting. You refrain from saying, okay, this is definitely how I see it. And this is good. This is bad. You give, you'll explain or you show people really quite deeply 
what people are about and so on. And I think probably the most controversial person in the movie is Russ McAmey. Um, Do you think so? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> and, I, I, and I really, and to be honest, I really, this is a sick, fucked up dude <laughs> who's actually getting people, oh, he's actually doing this for dogs. Oh, okay, he's not so bad. Oh, okay, he's been, he's done this, he does this. And then you listen, you, you know, watch this, and then you think, hold on, you had 14, 15 year old scare actors. Uh, he doesn't now. Um, and he's obviously getting, but I, I'm thinking, Honestly, what I thought about it, I was very much reminded of the Stanford experiment and the Milgram uh, experiment and these real look at the psychology of people. I found it absolutely fascinating. I did laugh. I, 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 um, Shah Mayer is just gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, isn't she great? You know, she's I'm, like I'm, she's my she's my favorite monster. She's my favorite monster, and I'm just I feel so happy that people, you know, get to meet her, get yeah. to know her. I mean, I interviewed a lot of people, and there were there were certain days. I mean, I don't even own a, a camera, so right. what I would do is in in Los Angeles, what you can do is you can rent a video camera from Thursday afternoon, bring it back Monday morning, and it counts as one day. Right. So I would plan, I would just film constantly. And then sometimes in one day I would have 14 interviews. Sometimes I would just have one, but I would bring in all these different people. Cause I just, if I could spend 30 minutes or 15 minutes with somebody and then get to know them and go, Oh, we have to dig deeper. When I interviewed Char, I was like, Oh my God, that she's incredible. You know, it, it it's one thing that she, I know she's an amazing scare actor. The first time I ever met her, she was in a show called Play Dead, one of the best live shows I've ever seen in my life with Todd Robbins telling true, creepy stories with doing bloody, violent illusions. And there was a part where she does a scare. I almost fell out of my seat, screaming my head off. I, I mean, that's, I'm not, I, I was screaming, and she was so scared. And she was on a stage far away from me and it wasn't like she made she didn't make a noise she didn't say anything she just did this, this one thing that just scared the hell i mean afterwards i go backstage to meet her and of course she's just such a wonderful person then i sit down and interview her and she starts using expressions about the haunt industry that i've never heard before she's like talking about haunt widows i'm like haunt widows what's a haunt widow i've never heard that i've you know everything out of her mouth was so interesting and and then the, then when i started learning more about her story and all the all the funniest parts about it the fight or flight stories the fight or flight stories that you know it where it became kind of a tragedy in her life too where people mm. some people got so scared they really attacked her and i just thought it was such a an incredible story about you know the heart of a haunter the heart of a monster someone who lives for scaring people and loves it so much and how tough it can be when you know when you're conflicted by what you're doing because it's dangerous what you're doing you know it's i, I just love it I, I love her so much so i'm so glad that i feel lucky that i get to introduce the world to char mayor yeah yeah amazing lady and and in case you hadn't Got it, folks. I really recommend everybody sees this, particularly if you don't know anything about Halloween. You know, as I say, from a UK per perspective, this is absolutely fascinating as far as I'm concerned. But I think, you know, the, the whole historical stuff, uh, and you do get delve, but it's to one of the questions that Craig asked um, after he'd spoken to you on Friday, he said, you know, uh, why is Halloween so big in the USA, a really uptight country? Um, <laughs> and i and i think you do you know you go into the history of it and i think i kind of get it now because <laughs> that's the way well, you know, know it's how you, it's how you deal it's how you deal with the stress i mean there's mm. a part of the movie that's only about maybe a minute and a half um basically when you're doing a doc when i'm doing this documentary i decided i'll just talk about it constantly whenever I'm out in public and I'll probably meet someone else that's, that has a good story to tell. And 
I was at a theater and I'm talking to this guy next to me. He says that he's in the, the military. And I said, oh, then you're probably in the haunted houses. I got this haunted house documentary I'm working on. And he goes, I am. I actually put on a haunt in a war zone. And I was like, I want to interview tomorrow. He's like, I live in South Carolina. So I had to interview him over Skype. A friend of his came over with a camera. I'm interviewing. It was, it was a whole thing. But what was so interesting is this guy was doing the haunt in a war zone on Halloween for the troops. They heard, and they put on a little boo scare maze. You know, there's a clown. Mm. You have the, the strings, uh, the, the fishing line hanging from the ceiling. So in the darks, when you walk through, you go, ah! and you see these soldiers screaming and laughing and running away from the guy with the chainsaw. And they, he said they went through it over and over and over again. It's like, there you go. You're allowed to be a coward in a haunt. You're allowed to be, like what Char says, you get to be a kid again. Oh, wow. You know, that's the whole point of it. I mean, what's so funny is the kid's perspective of a haunt versus an adult's perspective. Every adult goes, now I get to freak out and be a kid again, right? You know, when I was filming this, I saw a kid on the floor of a restaurant, on the floor, rocking back and, back and forth, screaming. And I was like, oh, I totally want to do that right now. I'm having such a bad day. I was like, really like that. I'm jealous of this child getting to scream. Of course, they'd take me away if I did that. But yeah. in a haunt, I can scream, as I can cry, I can fall to the ground and people will love it. For kids, there's that part. My nephew wanted to go into Donald's Hunt, but... Donald's hunt from the outside too. It's just, it's so loud. It's so scary. It's a home hunt. You're down the street and you hear chainsaws and people screaming and people run, adults running out screaming. He's like, I can't go in there. And the kid wearing the giant Taco Bell hat, <laughs> he says to him, if you go in there, you'll come out and you'll feel like a man. And I was like, oh my God, it's so funny. We use this haunting in America is like a dual rites of passage. For adults, it's the rites of passage to be a kid again. For a kid, it's the rites of passage to be, to be brave or courageous, like almost like a horror bar mitzvah. <laughs> you just like, <laughs> I've done it. Like I, 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 I survive that. Or you know what? I can have fun and scream my head off and be a kid again. There's something really special. Like again, I really think there's this therapeutic value of being scared. If I had narrated the movie, I would have brought that up. But I, I did want people to connect the dots with themselves. So. When it was over, you could have a debate. Yes. You can have an argument about it. Yeah, no, and it's interesting. One of the things I've always said about horror movies and the whole art experience is fear is like a muscle. You need to exercise it. You need to understand how it works. If you if you don't deal with the experience of being scared, you, it's interesting. You use you said about the um uh the military guys and we could look the military. Uh, yeah, you know, we've just got a comment in uh, from uh, Tupper Babe. I'm an Air Force veteran, and yes, we love doing that. You use the word coward. You get you get you you're allowed to be a coward. You're allowed to deal you know to deal with what you actually have to because feeling fear is nothing to do with cowardice. It's the way you behave. It's the way you deal with your fear. Um, you're exactly right. I, I I don't mean to put a label on it like that. It's more that. You know, as a, you know, society puts labels on things mm. and they put labels on adults. They put labels on men and they put labels on women. And men are supposed to act a certain way in circumstances and blah, blah, blah. Well, as a responsible adult, it's really fun to scream your head off and fall to the ground and, <laughs> and laughing and crying. <laughs> You know, it's a lot of fun to do that kind of stuff. And then there's roller coasters and roller coasters. You get that experience too. But it's so funny because like when you go down a drop, everyone screams because your stomach is dropping. But when you go through a haunt, how I react to something spooky and creepy and how you will be totally different. I just went through an experience last night when he was laughing at me because once I go in, my whole body changes. I, 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 I hunch down, <laughs> I put my hands up. I, I get totally swept up into the whole thing. It's so funny. I could spend the whole day watching the news and getting in and, and thinking about things and getting concerned. But once I go in there, it's like I, I'm like playing with friends as a kid, like the floor, the floor is lava and I have to avoid the, you know, it, immediately it's playtime. <laughs> and my imagination just sweeps me up. And I just, I don't know, that's one of the things I love so much about these experiences. And the thing about the movie that's so interesting to me 
was that I was like, wow, you really can create these immersive experiences and, and, and put people into these wild storylines. But then how far is too far? If we're, if we're using this, if horror is what we use to escape the horrors of society, the horrors of reality, then when does the horror stop being a simulation and just start being real or start being bullying? You know, and well, yeah, I, the, 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 funnily enough, that came up in a couple of, you know, the word bullying came up in sure. a couple, you know, with, with, with Donald. Uh, that was an absolutely fascinating interview. But I think one of the things that I found most disturbing in the documentary was the comments of the guy, of, um, one, two, three people, two guys and a lady who'd flown in from Kuwait uh to do this experience and you know the comment afterwards is like oh, you know i survived this i now want to put other people through it yes and i just yeah. thought that, that is and again i mentioned the milgram and the stanford experiences experiments earlier on you know there's like right. actually that i actually found probably far more just i found that as equally disturbing as the things that were being done to them and that you know Listen, like we all cycle, um, you got to see the cycle of abuse roll out on camera. Yeah. Like when, when you're, well, I was taught when, uh, when that uh, one woman who had just had the spider on her face, they put the bag on her head. They did all these things. She was screaming. I got to, I have to get out of here. And when it was finished and she said, if you ever need actors, I'd love to work here. And I said, why do you want to work here? And she said, because I want to hurt people. I'm like, hold on, let me change that. I want to make other people feel the way I felt or I want to do this, mm, mm. you start realizing, okay, she, she felt like they were hurting her. She wants to hurt other people. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting is that I, I can't judge that human reaction because what I'm looking at is this, there were other people who, after they went through it, were like, I could never go through something like that again. I could never work at something like that because I, I wouldn't want to do that to somebody else. And then it made me think so much about fraternities and sororities mm. and the idea that in a fraternity and sorority you get hazed it doesn't last for eight hours it lasts for what a year where you're being brutally hazed at times and and and, and some people are even killed during the process some people die being hazed at a fraternity or sorority where they force them to drink so much alcohol that then then you find out they're dead some fraternities and sororities have been stopped most haven't and most have a death toll. And I thought that was really, that was in the back of my mind because there was a fraternity guy that came out of blackout and he said, oh, I'd love to put the pledges through this. Mm -hmm. I think they would love it. It would scare the shit out of them. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I heard him say that and I was watching what was going on at McKamey Manor at times. I was like, you know, it's easy to go. Those people are crazy. Those people are sick. What's wrong with them? And then you go, but wait a minute. If this was in harvard if this was at a really nice school where you had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to attend you know where it was a rites of passage where after you are tortured for a year then you get to spend the rest of your college career torturing other people not for eight hours but for years that's really interesting to me and i i thought that was like it made me think so much. And I keep looking at the comments. Oh, Russ is crazy. Russ is this, Russ is that. And then I look at the comments and I, I see, I saw some guy complaining online and he was wearing a, a Harvard hat. And I, I was like, that's really interesting. I never joined a fraternity because I didn't want to be hazed. You know, that's just not for me. It's not something I'm looking for, but it's just interesting to see um, athletes that were speaking out against Russ um, there was a lot of different groups of people that, you know, come from a culture of hazing, you know, that, which I think is, I, I don't know, the whole thing is fascinating to me. Well, it's interesting, you know, it, it, one, and I have no idea, because again, this is nothing I've really, I mean, I experienced bullying at school, um, and vicious, nasty, and deeply damaging you know it is a deeply damaging experience yeah. uh, you know it, it, it affects me for years um certainly into my mid-20s um the, you know, the effect of being bullied at school 
so that you know enough so that I would literally tense up if I saw young men approaching me on the street because obviously it was young men who were my age um, when I was at school and this went on into until I was around about sixteen years old uh, and then it stopped um, because they left school um, but yeah it, you know and, it, and it literally. Yeah, mid mid twenties. So I I, oh, I, think I was I was bullied so bad in high school that a, a kid had to be expelled for how bad he um it was just you know I think it was one after one of the times when he beat me up and I I, I woke up and I was in the nurse's office I had blacked out you know Jesus. and I was a small kid so they were like oh let's let's pick on this kid you know Donald in the movie who talks about bullying I met him in the sixth grade. You know, we were monsters in a haunted house together in um at La Madera Elementary School. And there's oh, a wow. photograph of him as the as the the skeleton army guy. I was the kid in the picture with the Freddy glove and the skeleton shirt and the the really poor attempt at scratches on my face. I wasn't even Freddy. I, I don't know what I was. I was a kid <laughs> who had scratched his face with a Freddy claw where I don't know what I was thinking. Um we met in elementary school scaring people in the haunt and i remember you know when i went to his um his house for the first time and his brothers they beat us up and it was it was crazy and i remember telling my parents and they were like i said they they came down with baseball bats and lawn darts and bamboo sticks and they were just like my parents were like all right all right they, they thought i was being crazy and so, you know, years later, you know, after I, I would never go to Donald's house or talk to his family, when he said, you know what, I'm doing a haunt with my, uh, I was living in Los Angeles and he's in Orange County. Um, he says, I'm doing a haunt with my family, you should come. I'm like, why would I go anywhere near that? Sounds like, like, sounds like a terrible idea. They're, they're in a haunt. And it took me years before I would go because I really couldn't get out of my head, you know, uh, what it was like growing up with them. And then when I went to the haunt and saw that Donald created the haunt, that like, this is a spoiler alert, but I, I think it's it's a beautiful thing. Mm. And one of the reasons why I wanted to make the movie in the first place, he made a haunt that brought his dysfunctional family together. And even a great family that doesn't have any real huge issues. What do you do? You get together for certain holidays, you have meals together. Um, they create a giant horror attraction that the whole neighborhood loves and they do it together. Yeah. And it went from a family that, you know, people would get arrested on mother's day at that house and the whole street hated them to the whole street rooting for them and going, Oh, when, when's the next haunted house? Can we help out? You know, it's a, it's a really beautiful story about how scaring people in a in a home haunt actually brought these people together and kind of and nearly healed a family. And I, 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 I have to say, you know, that was one of the things I, you know, and I won't give away the ending of that story, but it's it was really moving, and I was really pleased, and you're really rooting for them. I, I have to say, the interview with the parents. There are a couple of moments in there. I think, oh, okay, I can see where all this comes from, um, and it, it's kind of like, oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, but it, it's a tricky. It's a it's an emotional, tough one with that one because it's like the whole family wants the haunt to keep going. The second time you watch it too, you really you keep thinking about, okay, this is why the family really wants the haunt to keep going because mm -hmm. it brings them all together. But Donald's wife just wants it to be done <laughs> because she doesn't really understand the you know the context of what, what this means i mean how often do we live our lives and we're not we're not watching our lives like it's a movie we don't realize oh well in order for this you know but when you lay it all out there and you see what it is it's like oh wow so interesting how everyone wants this haunt to happen but she doesn't but then her reasons are incredible <laughs> i don't know i I, I, and again, I you just watch Jamie it. Too. Yeah, yes. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and and again, this is what I said at the beginning. It's non-judgmental. This is a you know, this is pure documentarian. It doesn't comment. It lays it out for you to have your debate. You know, make your own decision. This is why I reckon. You know, really. Oh, we've been feeling some debates online that are wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's <just like> so <laughs> crazy, and some of them are really interesting. 
but it's always like the kid kids who watch it which and i'm always surprised when kids are watching this but when kids watch it they come back with the most thoughtful interesting commentary every single time i'm always like oh my god they always look a little bit deeper than everybody else does because you're just we're looking at the wild crazy parts of it right and funny what certain people or what kids are focusing in on and there were things i was hoping people would notice but it's just it's always bizarre when like a a 12 or a 13 year old goes oh you know what i thought was the most fascinating part i'm like really i mean like you, you know a lot of kids bring up russ's father as you know it, it's an interesting thing about russ so russ for people that don't know russ mccamey of mccamey manor he has a, a haunted house where you're going to go through it and it's going to go on for like eight hours where it's just you and one other person and you're mostly never going to see that other person. They're going to tie you up. They're going to cover you in tarantulas. They're going to find out what scares you sometimes for like a year before you go through. Sometimes it's a few months. Sometimes it's a few days. And he's looking through your social media accounts. He's learning everything he can learn about you so they can really drive you crazy while you're going through his haunt, he's filming you and taking pictures because he's trying to make his own horror movie. And it lasts for like sometimes four hours, sometimes six hours on you. It's like an out of control Rob Zombie movie that just never seems to end. And with in crazy music and editing, he puts a lot of work into these things. And um, you, you end up being kind of like the star of a horror film. And sometimes millions of people watch these videos. There's hundreds of, I've seen some that had a few hundred thousand views. I've seen some that had millions of views. So this kind of lures people in because they go, oh, I get to be the star of my own horror film. But then when they're there, if they want to get out, there's no safe word and he doesn't let you out. Okay. Well, that's the big, one of the biggest controversies of his hunt. Um, but what's interesting about him is he doesn't have the same logic that we have, that other people have. Everyone, like common sense is something that gets mentioned every once in a while. And he mentions it too. But when I wanted to put something in the movie where he could give you some food for thought, his father was in the military and was a part of that experiment the military did on their own soldiers, you know, where they had the, the, the nukes going off in the desert. Mm, yes. Right. And and they wanted to see what it would do to people, right? This was the experiment that our the American government did to soldiers. And what do they find out? That, oh, it, 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 you'll slowly die. It's going to kill you in the most horrific, insidious way, and it will go on for years until you just can't take it anymore. So Russ's father was taken advantage of, like all the other soldiers were. It's a horrific thing that happened. It's a terrible terrible thing that happened to, to our soldiers who already are volunteering and giving up so much of themselves for their country. And then they're being taken advantage of like this. And then Russ knew this, saw this, and he joined that same military anyway, because he wanted to be so much like his dad, because he loved his dad so much. And it, think about that too, the logic behind that, because you would think that Russ would be an activist. That just would be like, no, you know, this is, we have to stop this type of stuff. We have to support our troops and not let the government take advantage of them. And you think it would be that kind of a thing. Already the thought process behind my dad was in the military, the military, they did these terrible things to him, to him. I'm joining the military to be like my dad. So maybe the idea of him having a haunt that has no boundaries, no limits, it feels like anything can happen in his haunt. And if you want to get out, you can't get out. All of that just goes into this bizarre, interesting logic that only exists with him. With him, it's what it's part of what makes him fascinating. To well, me. It, it, what's really interesting is when you see the photographs of his father. I think, hold on, am I looking at Russ or am I looking at his father? Because they yeah, are two peas like in a pod. Just like him. And when you hear about how supportive his parents were of everything he did, and how they were always there to room on this one kid it's an 11 year old a father at fantastic film haunters played a fantastic fest and this one guy's going in the midnight screening with an 11 year old and i said look number one 
it's midnight. <laughs> this kid shouldn't be here. And he's like, no, no, no. He's going to love it. And the kid was like, look, trust me. I'm. I, this is for me. And I was like, I don't know. And I was really hesitant letting this kid go in there. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to let him in. And when the kid came out, he even said, you know, I really think that Russ not having his parents around anymore, his parents said, were there to root for him. They were his cheerleaders. He's all, but maybe they also reeled him in a bit. Mm -hmm. Without without them around, he's doesn't have any boundaries. And he also might be getting numb every year he does the haunt and he thinks he needs to make it more crazy when you don't. I mean, look, when I went through his haunt and there was no scare actors in it all, it was scary. Mm. It was it's really amazing. It was the the decorations that he created. He's robots in there. He spent 20 grand on one cost 20 grand. I was recognized some of these from a, a show called trans world. It's trans world is where the theme parks buy their big props. And he was buying a ton of props from there. So he's got hundreds of thousands of dollars of crazy robots and lights. And, but then on top of that, sometimes you're blindfolded in this hunt. You can't see any of it anyway, but it's all for his movie. So, and there's so much about Russ that I find fascinating. And it's so much about watching a hunt that it brings up the question, how far is too far? Watching it, watching something that doesn't have a safe word, watching something that, that goes a totally different direction than whatever the haunt is doing really helps you, someone who's not into haunts at all, go, oh, what I like are these traditional haunts or what I like are these interactive haunts. And then they come up with why they like it. And then they go out to the and go to a haunt for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. So we had this thing for sale at the beginning of October and when, when it was playing at festivals in September, then we were getting so many messages on our Facebook page from people who said, I've never been to a haunt before until now. And I was like, you know what? That's awesome. It's we're getting a debate going. We're getting really interesting conversations and we're getting people that are getting off the couch and want to go have an experience. But every time we show this somewhere, there's always one or two people who come up to me and go, how can I go to McKamey Manor? I really want to go. There's always somebody. You know, Jessica Cameron well, wants to go. Saying, Jessica you know, Cameron the, the, told me she wanted to go. I was like, Jessica, <laughs> Jessica, he's going to probably shave your head. She's like, oh, it'll grow back. I'm like, don't say that. <laughs> it, it, it is, yeah, it, it's uh, the fact that there's a huge waiting list, a huge yes. waiting list for the, and then it's I believe, fascinating. Now, and I believe if I've Googled this correctly, they've now got three. He's not just doing there, but they've opened up elsewhere. Like uh, when I was filming him the first time, he said he had seven locations. And then, if, and then it turned out it was all in his backyard. You know, <laughs> Russ is a showman. I mean, to be a haunter anyway, you've got to be like a P.T. Barnum of horror. If you're right. going to be a, any type of haunter, um, you've got to, you know, be good at storytelling and producing. And you got to be able to get it so many people together and then you had to promote the hell out of it yeah and he reminds me so much of like you know a william castle out of control you know it's yeah. like william castle would you know come up with like oh in the theater of the tingler we're gonna they're gonna have shockers under seats and they're gonna zap people you know and that those tinglers loose in the theater they, they would do these he, i love that movie matinee so much where John Goodman plays a William Castle type. You ever see that movie, Matt I don't think I have, no. Oh my God, it's a Joe Dante movie from, it's great. It's so much fun because they show a lot of things that William Castle would do. He would hire actors to pretend to protest a movie and say, this movie is disgusting. I don't want to go into it. And then people would be like, oh, I'm, now I'm going to see it. That, we're in America. <laughs> and yeah. it's funny when, when Russ is going on saying, you don't want to do this. You don't want to come here. Stay away. Stay away. Then people go, well, I'll check it out. But he keeps telling you what he's going to do. And people go anyway. But what you don't realize is how you're going to feel when you're there, what it's going to smell like, what it's going to feel like, what you're going to react to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I like about extreme hunts that have safe words is that every time i use a safe word in an extreme hunt and i've used this i've used the safe word and every time i use it i learn something about myself every time yeah and i love it because it's just like oh, i feel empowered that i can stop at any time i want to yeah and, 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 and that's, i think it's, it's it i do find that that's absolutely fascinating sorry to interrupt but um we have huh. a question from derek neal 
Question for John. What's the craziest behind the scenes story he heard or experienced from a haunt? If that doesn't just simply say anything to do with Russ. Oh, sure. I mean, look, there's so many. Um... Okay, well, one of them that was just really interesting was when I was filming Christina Buster. So Christina was the one who flew in from Kuwait. Right. She's an American contract worker. She works in Kuwait. She gets about like a month off every year. And she comes to America just to go to as many haunts as she possibly can. And she was the one that's in the movie where she said, um, uh, out here in Kuwait, it really sucks because there's no uh, there's no Halloween. I was like, that's why it sucks. I thought that was like the greatest <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that, that line kills me every time. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, it sucks. There's no Halloween in Kuwait. Um, that's Kuwait's problem. I love that. Christina, if you're watching, I love that. I love that you said that. Um, but then she goes, she's going through it. And at one point, she just kind of stops responding and she goes blank. And I was like, are you okay? And then Russ was talking to her. And then I just, I could tell she had gone into shock. She's not even responding that we're snapping fingers. I'm, I'm, I put my hands on her shoulders. She's not doing anything. I was like, oh my God, I just dropped my camera, picked her up and brought her inside this house. Um, I was being a very bad documentarian, but I was like, I was feeling like I was being a good human. I just mm -hmm. saw someone who was, I just thought she just needed help. And I just immediately brought her inside, sat her on the couch. And for 30 minutes, nothing, there was nothing, no reaction. And then after 30 minutes, she snaps out of it. She just looks around. She goes, why am I not in the haunt anymore? I said, you went into shock. She goes, and so you took me out of the haunt? I said, yeah, just put me back in. I flew 19 hours for this. Are you kidding me? And then Russ comes out and he's like, hey, he's like being like, hey, I'm, uh, how are you doing? She, and he, she said, screw you. Put me back in the haunt. And this time quit holding back so much. And he was like, what? <laughs> and she was, he's like, you're not going back in. She starts yelling at him. You put me in that haunt right now. He's like, oh, you want to go back in? So yeah, I'm like, I was trying to get them both to calm down. I'm like, stop it. Both of you. You're scaring the hell out of me. He goes back in. I hear the music. The sound effects are going back on. He comes, the monsters come running out. They grab her. She goes back through for four more hours. When it's over, she's like, I can't thank you enough. This was incredible. She went back three more times. She did McKamey Manor four times. And every time before she would go, she would taunt Russ online and the monsters and say, oh, last time you took it easy on me. This time I really want to see what you're made of. And she would call them names online. I was like, I was messaging her. I'm like, please stop this. I mean, you're, you're egging them on now. I mean, I saw even crazier things than that. But that was the one that I just, that's when I stopped using, projecting what I'm feeling onto other people. Because I was like, you know what, I, I'm in my mind, if I had gone into shock in a haunted house when it was finished, I would want to leave. Mm -hmm. I'd want to go. I wouldn't want to do it over and over and over again. You know, so I stopped using words like weird or strange. I just started realizing those are just phrases that apply, that don't even apply. It's just over. I'm st I've stopped thinking, oh, this must be what they're feeling and thinking. And everyone that goes through something like that it has a different, ex you know, something different happens. But uh, look, I've seen crazy things happen in traditional haunts too, you know, that um, we weren't even able to get on camera, but I've seen in traditional haunts, someone getting scared, they get scared. They realize they just got scared and they were with a group of friends and they felt a little, you could tell they felt a little embarrassed and then they attack the monster or they trash that part of the set, mm -hmm. break, mm -hmm. break props. You know, the extreme haunts and the interactive immersive theater haunts or experiences, it's hard to even call them haunts anymore because haunts, would, would, they used to all be supernatural ghost houses. That's not true anymore. Now you have like saw mazes and stuff. Um, when you go through the ones that are even more intense, they do such a good job of mentally preparing you before you go in. But I just did a haunt in um, that was opened just a couple of weeks ago in uh, in New Orleans called um, Rise, and it opened with this woman coming to you, and she has these really friendly rats, and you're supposed to hold and pet the rats while she's telling you the rules. I don't know whether if 
whether this is intentional or not, but subconsciously, it made me think about how vulnerable this little animal is and how I'm, even though I'm a little scared of it, I'm being really nice to it. And then they give you the rules again with a scare once the rat's out of your hands. And then you go through the haunt. And I kept thinking about how, wow, there's no one is doing the fight or flight reactions here. Maybe it had something to do with creating empathy for the for the actors inside before it even started. I don't know. I, it, there's a lot of interesting things like that that I think are really kind of cool that people, attractions should be doing. Mm. It, it, it is absolutely fast, absolutely an amazing, absolutely an amazing uh, documentary. So I mean, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it, man. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, as you're making the movie, you don't know. I mean, the, my first cut of the movie was very different. My first cut was like haunt, haunt, haunt. It was so many haunts. It should have been called. It was like the deal of haunt movies. It was just like haunt, it should have been called haunt gasm or haunt tastic. It was way too much. Like if you like haunts, great. If you didn't, you hated it. What I like about this one is you can watch it with someone who doesn't get it. Yeah. And they'll understand more about why you're into it. And they might even find something they like about it. You know, and at the same time, you got to have a great argument, a great debate. Who, who, who wants to see a movie where at the end you're just like, uh huh. Yeah. I want a movie where at the end you're just like, I can't shut up about it. When every time I see a Tarantino movie, I can't shut up about it. Whoever I'm with, we have, there's always an argument about something. You know, I, I love that kind of stuff. You turn up the volume, turn up the heat on something. It's, it's a lot more fun. Well, it, I think it was Sylvia Soska saying about the, the comment her dad, who is a, an artist, is saying, you know, artists are, it should be about invoking debate. And she said, um, art, as my father, who's an artist, once said, isn't so that everybody likes it. And I was like, what a great note. What an interesting comment. I was so lucky to get them. Yeah. I was so excited to have them in the movie. I'm, I'm a huge fan of their work. I think they're just so cool. I can't wait to see what they're doing with Rabbit. Yeah, but, uh, me too. Uh, yes. I, yeah. <laughs> they're going to have some with body horror and a, I just can't wait to see what they're going to do. But I don't know. I was really lucky to get everyone that I got in this movie and to hear their insight and their comments. It was just, uh, I don't know I learned a lot about, I just learned so much more about people and relationships and society making mm -hmm. this haunted house documentary than I thought I would. And I was, I was surprised to hear everyone's answers about what their spouses think about it. I thought that was really interesting. And I don't know, it was really a trip. It's a real trip. Well, yeah, it is, I think it is a multi-dimensional documentary because you do, you know, you get Donald and you get his wife and it, it's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, it's I, like, I, <laughs> and I, it's like, and, you know, and when the children come, this is what's going to happen. He's going. <laughs> we shall see. Oh, it was so funny. Like that. That was. I mean, she, Donald's wife really did not want to be filmed. She just, she just didn't want me encouraging his haunt at all. She was like, "Look, this has got to end." And um, I finally got them to let me film because I was like, "It's my birthday." For my birthday present, let me just film. She, she was like, fine. And we uh, did the interview and I filmed it. It was a 38 minute argument that they had. I really want to release the argument. The argument's so much fun because <laughs> it's just, I used a bunch of it in the movie, but it's like, there's so much more. And there was one point where I just, I couldn't help it. I just started laughing and crying during the fight and they both started stopped and looked at me and i was like oh my god that's right i need to be like really professional here but it was just too funny donald his wife's not so into his haunt and then throughout the year he scares her and like we mentioned one of the scares in the movie but there was more <laughs> there were so many more scares and they happen all throughout the year like when they're doing laundry he scares her when they're like he has all these different and he's like really proud of, oh, oh, this is one of the things I, oh, she was terrified when I did this. I was so proud of myself when I, I was like, what? <laughs> <Don't>, uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> who, whose grandma, whose grandmother did the set up when she was babysitting them? That's in the bonus features. This so is in the you, bonus features. Yes. That's right. How. So you have the, um, because you've, you uh, backed us on Kickstarter, which thank you very much. That's my pleasure. I'm so glad I did. 
<laughs> I'm so glad you did too. Um, I was really funny. Every once in a while, I'll see I'll see a backer, and I go, I'm like, oh my god, that's Chatterbox. Or like, you know, Neil Patrick Harris backed us, or um, oh wow, Jorge Garcia, yeah, yeah, Jorge Garcia, um, from from Lost, who and from a million other things. I was watching Californication, and I was like, well, there's Jorge Garcia. He's always popping up, but he, um, Jorge, actually put on his own haunt. Uh, this year in Hawaii. And I, I just saw him at haunts all the time. Um, and he backed us too. It was just amazing to see the different, I love it. I love the different, it was so much, it was so cool that you, you backed me. I gotta say like, I was really, <laughs> I was really proud. But um, so what we did was I, I put together 30 minutes of bonus features. Mm -hmm. um, I had way more than that edited and ready to go. But then I found out, oh, there's a lot of cost in even showing the bonus features. You know, I did everything, you know, you, you, you got to do everything legally. You got to do everything with insurance, got to do all this. I realized I could only afford to show 30 minutes of bonus features. And I wanted to go deeper with John Murdy from Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. And he shares the greatest story about his grandmother his That's grandmother yeah. really got him into his love of scaring people and horror. And when his parents went out to dinner one night, his grandmother said, why don't we all pretend like we just got murdered? And they, she picks out ketchup, puts it all over them, rips their clothes, puts a bunch of like knives on the ground, covers them in ketchup, and they all lay down waiting for his parents to show up. Like they just got murdered. And then he's talking about what she would do in his haunted house that he would put put on when he was a kid. Oh my God, the haunted house stories with her running around. She would scare people in the hunt and then chase them out of the hunt through the street around the block. And I was like, wait a minute. He's like, no, she would. That's what she did. She was very committed to scaring people. It was like, <laughs> it's a beautiful story. I love him so much. I love that he shared that story. I was like, what a beautiful story. Your grandmother got you into this. It was like, I just love the people like John Murdy, who John Murdy is the creative director of Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. And he's a, a real visionary in the haunt world. And this is the guy who like Eli Roth, Rob Zombie, everybody, the, the Kubrick estate, because it wasn't The Shining the book, it was the, shi the Shining the movie. They had to go through the Kubrick estate to, because they had the masks of Jack Nicholson's face. They had like all the stuff in the movie all these places and all these people they trust him as a visionary that he and jason blum that this year they had a blum house it was a trilogy you went through three blum house movies in a row in one haunt and they had the, an insidious maze at the same time I mean, he, it's as a fan it's like walking through the movie screen and going to the other side it's the greatest yeah, I, thing I, me. I did i was lucky enough to do the american werewolf in london one a couple of years so great it was, it. was so great and, and massively en enhanced by the fact that me biggest scaredy cat in the world was there with a mate of mine and my manager coming up behind me and then grabbing me at my, my, <laughs> my waist every so often <laughs> so, couldn't hear anything for me screaming basically your manager was scaring you while you're going yeah. through yeah that's yeah the worst yeah yes that's just... the worst leave it to the scare actors i hate it there's a, I love, there's a great thing online where it says all the different tips, what not to do in a haunted house. Don't point out where the monster is hiding. Don't scare your friends. You're going to screw up the other. It's, it's like a really funny thing that every year, scare actors and haunters, every year they, they share this, like, please share this with your friends. I love that. Yeah. Like John Bree grew up doing this thing. He loves it so much. And it's, it's so cool to see someone that's at the top of his game that grew up loving this, that it was like a passion like that his grandmother got him into it. And his first haunted house, we got, I asked him, do you have photographs of your first haunted house? And he found them for the movie and they're in the bonus features. You see, um, he did a Star Wars haunted house. The year oh, Star yes. Wars came out. It's gorgeous. He made the costume, it was, look, when I cut that out of the movie, the first, uh, when I cut that out of the movie, it was so painful. I'm like, oh God, I want this in the movie. But I want the movie to feel like a movie mm -hmm. and you have to have a focus and you have to have a big beginning a middle and end a driving point a thesis you have to deliver 
And within the first minute, we're telling you what, where this movie's going. Mm -hmm. We're telling you the first, mm -hmm. within the first three minutes, you get the theme and you get what we're going to be going after. So then I was like, all right, I want 30 minutes of bonus features where you can just haunt out. You're not worried about mm. the story. Like you're, you're, you're getting to dig deeper in Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights, get a little bit of not scare school um, where they train the monsters. You get a lot of haunted overload with the guys that build the giant skulls. Yeah. You get more with Delusion, the Ellie Haunted Hayride. I thought Delusion get, was fascinating. I, the Delusion, oh, I want I want to see. Del that looks really fascinating. You'll love it. You'll love yeah. it. That's a, That really isn't... You don't have to be in the haunts at all. That's like, are you a theater person? Yeah. Because this is it. And that's the thing about haunting now is like, this is the new wave of theater. This yeah. is this is how you like last night. I went to Zombie Joe's Underground Theaters, um, Camp Witsit, and immediately you take an a, like a Boy Scout oath. This is what a bad Boy Scout I am. I'm like, I, was, I can do this a lot easier. <laughs> I can do that easy. This I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> Do an oath, they blindfolded me. And then you walk inside of a you walk inside of a little building, and it instantly you feel like you're in nature. And you're going through summer camp tents, and you were going through all it was so I'm laughing, I'm screaming, you're having to jump over boulders, you're where there's archery, there's but then but they have the, all these really fun twists and turns, and I was just dying. And like that's theater now theater is where you get to become an active participant you're not just passively sitting in a chair and you can do that you could spend hundreds of dollars sitting in a chair and watching a great performance there's nothing wrong with it i i, I still like doing that mm. but it's so much fun when you get to have your own adventure and afterwards talk about it with your friends and depending on what you do in some of these things you're going to experience something slightly different than what i experienced yeah and next thing you know, we're talking about our experiences like i did delusion and i got kidnapped in the bathroom the story from the movie i was kidnapped in the bathroom and then my friends went on a totally different adventure and at the end of the night we were sitting around talking about it and realized oh my god it's like we're sitting around a campfire telling a ghost story but it's not a ghost story it's what happened five minutes ago and it got us really it became it went from really fun to then it became scary. And then we had a story and an experience and what a, what a great thing you can give somebody. These are like these amazing adventures sure. that you can give people. I'm, I'm just excited for the, the future of this and where it's going next. It's really cool. It sounds, it sounds fascinating. Okay. We've officially run out of time. Um, and it's been amazing. I think the one question I did want to ask you, what are you working on now? What's next up? What should people look forward to? Well, we're, we're I'm going around pitching a bunch of projects right now. Um, but one thing that also released, um, I uh, created and co-developed and directed and produced a virtual reality project called Flatline Experience. Um, and I'm really proud of this. I've been wanting to do a virtual reality experience where you go through somebody's actual near-death experience. Um, ever since it was about 16 years ago when I met somebody that had a near-death experience. I wanted to, I just knew you couldn't just film that because you'd be judging the person. But if you're put in their point of view and you go through a near the near death experience they're telling you about, it's, I just had to wait for virtual reality to catch up. And I'm so excited with it because you actually, you hear someone telling their story and then here comes a spiraling vortex and you get pulled into it. And it is, such an incredible experience it's really it's it's fun it's scary and it's emotional and that's basically everything i'm ever going to do it's going to be something that uh, makes you think gets you worked up it's really visceral but by the end of it it's a really interesting emotional experience i i i, I just feel like you know i don't I like thing. I'm not here to do like a one note, one tone type of a thing. I like to have a roller coaster of emotions where when it's over, you really feel like you've been through something special. So we're going to have, uh, I have some other projects we're pitching right now. So I think we're going to have some very exciting news coming up really soon. And if anyone's in um, 
if you're in uh, Austin, Texas for South by Southwest, I'm on a panel. Oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, it's going to be the, uh, it's the panel's called uh, Immersive Horror Experiences. And I'm on there with Joel Zika, who um, he's uh, in Australia. He comes to America with a, a VR rig and he's been filming the last of the, the American dark rides. Like the little, the rides that go into the dark and spook, like a, it's almost like a haunted house on wheels, right? On right, track. right. And he's been filming those in virtual reality to preserve the stories. So when you put on the headset, you're on the old ride. And it's, it's like, I love it. I love anytime someone does history with a pulse, you know, yeah. there's, you get to preserve it in a cool way. So we're going to be doing a really fun panel where we're going to be covering um, these immersive horror experiences from dark rides to virtual reality and all the stuff in between. Um, and we put together a really fun presentation for that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds extraordinary. That sounds really, really good fun. Thank okay. You. Well, um, We'll say goodbye in just a few moments. Before I do, I just want to let people know who's joining me next week, and that is Mick Strawn, who is the production designer on Nightmare on Elm Street 3, and Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. Um, so I'm really talking, um, looking forward to speaking to him. Also coming up, we have Stephen Cognetti, director of Hell House LLC, which completely coincidentally is set in a haunted house attraction. Um, do you know it? I I have to see it. I, I still haven't seen it, but the um I was just I just had drinks with the guys who did um the houses October build. Right. And um it's funny because they saw my movie, I've seen theirs, and then they're like, We gotta let's let's talk hot. It was so much fun <laughs> hanging out with them. And they're just like they're seeing it from a totally different angle too. They're just like, how did you, how did you like this hunt? It was so funny. Yeah. And then yeah. they brought up that one too. A few people have been bringing that up to me that I, that I need to check. I'll check it out. Look, yeah. if it's about yeah, a yeah. I, I, eventually I, 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 I'll I, see it. <laughs> I, I, I've watched the first 20 minutes and I thought, this is really interesting. And I, I got in touch with Stephen and said, I haven't had a chance to watch it all yet. Uh, and I said, Look, this is really interesting. I want to it see looks what like you... fun. Yeah, it, it, it does. Like He's fun. working I'll on... definitely check it out. He's working on number two at the moment. Um, oh, cool. Also coming up on February the 11th, um, a gentleman who I worked with, yeah, over 30 years ago, Andrew Robinson, uh, on a little movie called Hellraiser. I'm actually getting goosebumps as I say this. So Andy is going to come on to chattering with Nicholas events, and we can talk about all sorts of things. So um, that's happening on February the 11th. Um, and so, yeah, so keep an eye out for that, folks. John, this has been extraordinary, and thank you so very much indeed for uh, agreeing to come on and talk about your amazing documentary. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, one last thing. For mm. anyone that's in Australia that wants to go through an immersive horror experience, there's a really good one that's about to happen in February. It goes um, from Valentine's Day on for like a week or so. It's called Alone. Alone, you go through by yourself. Like they're, they're the gimmick right now is they're saying this Valentine's Day, spend it alone. <laughs> but <laughs> it's in it's in Melbourne and alone. They do such a good job of putting you through an experience that is totally different from what it, than any other experience that's ever been out there. It's it's emotional. It's it's a trip. I mean, they, they don't rely on anything that any other haunt does. And by the time you're finished, you and your friends will just, you won't be, you won't be able to shut up about it. It's, it's an wow. amazing emotional experience. And uh, yeah, it's this February and it's in Melbourne. You've got to check it out. If you're in Australia, look up uh, alone.au. Right. And if you're anywhere else, just look up alone. Um, uh, exis alone existential haunting. What they do is just, it's artistic. It's beautiful. It's uh it's a, it's really incredible. You know? And you can feel very safe, completely <laughs> submitting to them. Just do it. You're going to leave. You're, you're in good hands. You're in very safe hands when you do that with them. <laughs> oh, that sounds brilliant. That sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, John, thank you so very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, Folks, I will see you in, yeah, a, a week tonight, uh, my time, and uh, with Mick Strawn. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves and stay safe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you. I'll meet you next week. And I'm going to hit the stop.